Hi, welcome to a new video. My name is Rafiq. Let me show you an illustration of a nanotube that we created for a paper. You can see here. If you zoom in, you can see that individual molecules are represented like this. You can see a green spherical part with two tails in blue color. Not only that, it has also two red tails as well. So depending upon its nature, whether it is hydrophilic or hydrophobic, it forms this really interesting assembly. Let me show how we created this illustration using Blender. Before that, let me show you the research paper quickly to give you an idea. This is from Professor Thomas Ebbeson lab, first authored by Dr. Anup Thomas, who is currently an assistant professor at Indian Institute of Science. I will put the link to the research paper as well as the 3D model that we are going to make in the description. If you are interested, you can have a look. If you look here, you can see the molecule, which is represented neatly with a simple illustration. You can see two tails shown in red color and also two tails shown in blue color. And this is the aggregation that it forms. Not only that, one more point I would like to add. When it forms the nanotube, we have to keep one point in mind. It forms helical pattern, which is very simple. I will show you that as well, which is represented. You can see here the molecules are forming helical twist. Now let's open Blender. Okay, first of all, we need to create the single unit of the molecule. Let me delete the default cube, press X, delete, add a UV sphere, shift a mesh UV sphere. Now we need to scale this along Y axis. You can see the green line here. Let me choose this scale tool and you can see this green axis. Select on that and move like this so that you can scale. That looks fine. Let's slightly reduce the scale in Z direction as well. This is fine. Now to remove these grid lines that you can see on the surface, right click, click shade smooth. Now the surface is smooth. Now we need to add these four tails, which can be easily created using curves. Let me go to top view so that we can work very easily. Shift A, Curve, Bezier. Now you can see a curve here. Let me choose Move tool and you can move the curve to one side like this. Let me zoom in. Go to Edit Mode, press Tab. Now you can see two ends of this curve also which is having a tangent at those points. Now what we need to do, select this point and move this in this direction. Now it is exactly placed on top of this grid line so that we have a reference and again we need to extrude so that this curve will become lengthier. So the shortcut for that is E. Press E so that you can extrude. Now you can see one more point has been created. Let's place it here at this grid line so that we can easily work with that. Actually for making our tail, we need to create a sine wave, right? So we have created half part of the wave. Now arrange this side as well nicely so that we have a smooth curve like this. So if you zoom in, you can see that the curve is smooth till here. Here we have a small variation. For making any changes to the smoothness of the curve, you need to simply select on this tangent. Click here and move this to one side and choose a position that you are happy with. Now this looks okay to me. Again, select this third point and press E so that we have a new point. Place this here and move the tangent and select this point. Press E again and place this here and move the tangent again to adjust the curve and make fine adjustments. Now we have one full wave to increase its length, repeat the process again to make it lengthier. Select the one end point and repeat the process. Press E and extrude. Now look at the molecule and count the number of carbon atom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Accordingly, you can adjust the curve. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Similarly, make other tail as well. One, two, three. For that, you can simply select this curve and press Shift D and move this to a side and go to Edit Mode, press Tab and you can simply select the other part and simply delete. Now we have the small tail. Now we need thickness for this curve, right? For that, go to Object Data Properties. Under Geometry, you can see Bevel. 
expand that menu and you can see an option called depth increase that value from zero and you can see that the curve now has a depth i will go with point two do that for the other curve as well now go to top view now let's connect this tail to the core part select one tail and move this to one side now this is a curve we need to join all geometries so that we can consider the entire molecule as a single object for that we need to convert this curve into a mesh select the curve right click choose convert to and select mesh now this will be a mesh if you go to edit mode you can see that all the vertex points just appeared do that for other curve as well go to convert to and mesh and move this to other side now duplicate both of them select the tail shift d and move to one side do that for the other one as well shift d move to other side now we need colors right select the core part go to material properties click new and we need to change the color to green click on base color and choose a green color now you don't see anything here because we need to switch to material preview mode that you can see here named as viewport shading now you can see the colors add colors for the tails as well now we have our base unit let's join all of them together choose this select box and click and drag select like this now all of them are selected and press ctrl j now you can select this as a single object like this now it's time to create the nanotube for that we will use array modifier now we have our single object let's make a dimer of that shift d move this to one side like this now let's rotate this along y axis in 180 degree type r y 180 now you can see that it just got rotated move this here and position it nicely like this now let's join both of them again select this one press shift and select the next one and press ctrl j now you can see that it acts as a single object now we have one single unit of the nanotube it is forming a circular array first then that circular array is forming an array in z direction like this so that it forms a nanotube so first of all we need to create a circular array right for this we will use array modifier it will be very easy and very interesting so let's do that let's move the entire object exactly at the origin so that we can work easily here you can see a menu in item you can type the x y z value to zero now we have the origin at the exact center of the two axis which is basically origin of the entire 3d viewport now for creating a circular array what we will do we will move the entire object to one side by keeping the origin at the center for that go to edit mode press tab now you need to make sure that entire mesh is selected press a so that everything will be selected and move this to one side you can see the origin here if you don't see the origin make sure that you selected the move tool and let me move this along x axis like this click and hold on this red axis and move this to one side like this now if you go back to object mode by pressing tab you can see that the object has moved to one side but the origin is remaining at the same position so why we did that we want to create a circular array right for that we need origin of the object also at the center of the array now go to modifier properties and select on add modifier and click array now you can see that it is forming an array so you can see the values here factor x y z x equal to 1 y and z 0 change x value from 1 to 0 so that both of them are here now we have an array but all the objects are at the same position that's why we are not seeing multiple objects we have two units let's increase the number here from 2 to 10 now we need an object using which we can rotate this array so that we will form a circular array for that add an empty axis 
which is an object using which you can do operations but it has no mesh information it will not appear in your final render shift a go to empty and choose plane axis now you can see a small object appeared here which is nothing but a simple axis select this object go to modifier properties activate this object or offset expand that window now we need to choose the object using which we will offset this array right so you can see an eyedropper tool here select on that and click on this empty or you can just simply select inside this box and choose empty now you can see some weird things are happening that is because we have made some changes to this mesh we need to apply that press ctrl a and choose all transform now you can see that artifacts has disappeared now this looks fine now if you simply select this empty axis and rotate by pressing r z you can see that it is forming a circular array now you increase the number you can complete the circle and if you think the gap between these two units need to be increased simply select this empty axis again and rotate it along z axis you can see the setting here as well change the value here from minus 6.5 to minus 7 now we have one full circular array now what we'll do add one more array modifier on top of this array so that we can create an array along z direction again go to add modifier and click on array now you can see that it is forming an array of the first array that we have created if you go to modifier tab you can see that two arrays are there array and array point zero zero one let me minimize the first one and change the factor x y z values x from one to zero and z from zero to one now you can see that the array is forming in z direction right that is exactly what we want now increase the number from 2 to 35 okay now you can see that it is forming a tube right now if you increase the count here you can increase the height and you even you can increase the gap between single units by increasing the offset value here let's try 1.1 now the gap between these two units will be increased which you can see now now as i mentioned earlier if you look closely you can see that there is a twist happening like this right which is basically formed by creating a twist on second array the one unit is not sitting exactly on top of the second one what i mean by that if you look here you can see that it is forming a linear array we need some rotation happening so that this unit will be here and this will be here a twist has to be introduced in the second array for that again add an empty object shift a go to empty plane axis you can see our second empty object here which is named empty point zero zero one now select our nanotube go to modifier settings and activate object offset for the second modifier here for now i will reduce the number of the units to five so that we can work easily once we are happy with the arrangement we can increase the number and increase the height of the nanotube and we have object offset activated for the second array and select on this object box and select empty dot zero zero one now we need to rotate the second empty axis to introduce the twist select the empty dot zero zero one here and in this menu which you can expand by clicking on this icon you can see location rotation and scale in rotation change the z value from 0 to 0.5 now you can see that it started rotating increase the rotation so that you get really nice twist it's not yet there we need to increase the value to for example 2 now this unit need to be exactly at the top of the junction of these two units so rotate again change the value to 3 looks fine and now we have our basic structure now you only need to increase the count all right that's it we have created our nanotube by adjusting the distance between 
the origin and the unit you can actually reduce the radius of the nanotube if you want now you can create nice lighting and place the camera in a suitable location and you are ready to render your final illustration let me add a light shift a light area lamp scale it up now we have a light in the scene increase the power value go to render preview mode so that you can see how it will appear in your final illustration now add a camera shift a camera we will go with this angle for creating the final render press ctrl alt 0 so that the camera will be automatically oriented in this direction now you can improve the lighting in the scene by adding more lights and placing it in different angles and when you are happy just go to render and click render image which will give you a final illustration that's all i have added a link to download this 3d model if you want to have a look in the description i hope you learned something new about ra modifier and its possibilities in creating supramolecular assemblies if you have any specific request to make anything let me know in the comment section i will be making tutorials based on that thank you so much for your overwhelming response to my first tutorial I'm sure that this single tool will enhance your research communication quite a lot and this is a tool which will benefit you for the rest of your life. I'm very happy to help you learn Blender. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.